Let's now consider the natural response of a capacitor and resistor, or a circuit that contains a capacitor and a resistor. So as we talked about before, the capacitor was in this circuit here. It was charged up to some initial voltage. In this case, we're going to refer to the initial voltage as V0, and in this case, V0 is just equal to the source voltage. At time t equals 0, the switch closes. We know that the voltage across the capacitor at time 0 plus, which is the time immediately following the instant, just the instant, just the right-hand side of 0, the voltage of the, on the capacitor at that moment is equal to the voltage that the capacitor had right before it switched. So we introduce now some, some terminology. We've got three different sides of zero. We've got the zero minus side, which is the instant just before the switch moves. Then we have t equals zero, which is the instant in time when the switch moves. And then we have the instant in time right after, where, right after the switch moves, and we're going to refer to that as t equaling zero plus. So, again, because we can't instantaneously change the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the capacitor right after it switches is equal to the voltage across the capacitor right before it switches. And again, depending upon where you look and which book you're referring to, you'll see that quantity referred to, the initial voltage referred to as V sub C of zero plus, and sometimes see it referred to as V naught. And we'll use those two, those two uh, expressions interchangeably. So here's our circuit. It involves a capacitor and a resistor. They're connected in parallel, and in fact, they're also connected in series. But the, because they're in parallel, or they both have the voltage, the voltage across both of their devices is V sub C. Now, we know that in a resistor, the current is equal to the voltage across the resistor, which in this case is V sub C, divided by R. On the other hand, we know that in a capacitor, the current as a function of voltage is I is equal to C times the derivative of the voltage across the capacitor with respect to time. And what we want to do, or what we're going to do, is we're going to write an equation involving these by summing the currents leaving this node and then solving for the voltage across the capacitor as a function of time. So KCL at the node tells us that the current leaving the node going this way is, let's see, uh, I, don't need that, C dV dt plus, and I'm going to drop the subscript C here because it just makes the math, uh, math, math messy. The only voltage that's in here is the voltage across the capacitor. So C dV dt plus the current leaving the node going this way, which is V sub C divided by R, the sum of those two currents equals zero. Now, just a little bit of cleaning up here. First of all, let's divide both sides of the equation by C so that we end up with dV dt dV dt plus 1 over RCV is equal to 0. This nice, uh, rather simple first order differential equation is solved through a separation of variables. Our, variable, our variables are V and T. So let's start by subtracting this term from both sides so that we get dV dT is equal to negative 1 over RC times V. Let's look at this for just a second. What this is saying is that the rate at which the voltage across the capacitor is changing is proportional to, in this case, the proportionality constant is 1 over RC, times the voltage across the capacitor. Let's say that again. The rate at which this voltage across the capacitor is cha changing depends upon the voltage. What that means is the bigger the voltage, the larger V, the greater the change will be. As V gets smaller and smaller, the rate at which the voltage is changing is getting smaller. Now, let's go ahead and solve this for V as a function of time. We'll multiply both sides of the equation by dt and divide both sides of the equation by V so that we end up with dV over V is equal to negative 1 over RC times dt. 
you see the separation here. We now have all the voltage terms on the left. There's only one time term on the right, the dt. And now we integrate. And we're going to integrate here, and we'll integrate dt here, starting at t equals 0, and going up to the upper limit of integration will just be our variable t. The integration on the left-hand side will be the corresponding voltages. So the voltage, our lower limit on this side, will be the voltage at t equals 0, which we're going to refer to, just because it's nice, concise notation, we're going to call it v naught. And the voltage, or the variable v, that corresponds to t will just be v of t. So the upper limit is actually the function that we are going to be solving for. We perform the integration 1 over v dv. That gives us the natural log of v evaluated from v0 to v of t on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we get negative 1 over rc, r times c in the denominator, times t evaluated from 0 to t. Evaluating the left side of the upper and lower limits, we get then the natural log of v of t minus the natural log of v naught. And then on the right-hand side, we have simply just 1 over rc times t minus this expression evaluated at 0, but that, of course, is just 0. Combining, combining the difference of the log terms on the left-hand side into a single log term, we have then the natural log of v of t over um, v naught. On the right-hand side, just rewriting, that's negative 1 over rc times t. Now, again, we're trying to solve for v of t. It's wrapped up in the log at this point, so we're going to exponentiate both sides. And when we do so, we get then v of t over v naught is equal to e to the minus 1 over rc times t. Now, multiplying both sides of the equation by v naught, we then have what we were looking for. The voltage across the capacitor as a function of time is equal to v naught, our initial voltage, times this e to the minus t over rc. This constant in the denominator, rc, we're going to define as a circuit parameter known as tau, the time constant for the circuit. We'll talk more about that later, but note that the units of tau are seconds, and that that constant, that time constant, represents a measure of the quickness or the speed with which the circuit responds. So finally, rewriting this, then we have v of t is equal to v naught e to the minus t over tau. We have this voltage here starting at v naught across the capacitor. As time progresses, that voltage decays exponentially, and the rate at which it's it's uh, changing is determined by this time constant, which in this case is equal to r times c.